Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is February 27th, and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. Here's our storm as of a couple days ago, and it was a pretty significant windmaker here across the region. We made national news, had some big gusts. Boeing Field hit 60 miles per hour, some pretty widespread gusts across the region. Hundreds of thousands of people without power, very substantial storm. And if we put that into motion and check out what happened yesterday, look at the lenticular cluster to kick off across the Olympic Mountains. You can see them right there and then as we went through the evening hours yesterday we got those lenticular clouds across mount rainier i've got a buddy who's got his webcam pointed out there i'm always checking that one out but i could see that lenticular cloud from my desk there at SeaTac yesterday so i was taking some pictures of that but yeah fun stuff there and then this ends up where we are now so we'll take a look at what is to come here and i'll show you that as we go through the month of march potentially april we are definitely going to be dealing with some cooler weather at times you know we are not just all of a sudden going to be diving into spring here in the pacific northwest or Thing like that we're definitely gonna have some more active weather here over the next couple of months i show i'll show you some of that here in a moment uh visible satellite image you can see mount rainier there's mount st helens and mount adams and mount hood and the cascades of oregon and some mid-level clouds out there some lower elevation clouds out there as well so if you want a nice affordable weather station, it's easy to set up. It's got a lightning detection system to help support the channel. Click on the link down below to save 10% off. You can see all the different things that it does. You will not regret making that purchase. Uh, looking at the National Weather Service for the Pacific Northwest, you can see that we are definitely quieter than what we've been dealing with. Dealing with some warmer weather here as well. We'll take a look at those temperatures in a moment. And we're going to be dealing with post 7 p.m. sunsets here really quickly as we go through daylight savings time coming up on into the early portion of March. Right now, we're still setting things at about, what, 5.51 p.m., but you can definitely feel it in the evening hours. We are staying light later, and we're getting light a bit earlier now as well. So, you know, we're dealing with about, what, you know, uh, 6, uh, this is March, so March 1st, 6.49 a.m., sun rises, and by the time we get towards March 5th, it looks like we're 6 p.m., but then look at that daylight savings clicks over, and we're setting the sun at 7.06. By the end of March, the sun will be setting at 7.38 p.m., glorious. Now, when I talk about um, meteorological winter, for example, that is shown in the blue here. You go from January, February, and March. Astronomical winter goes from December 21st to March 20th. Then you can see astronomical spring goes from March 20th to June 21st, and so on. But it's easier to classify this meteorologically speaking if you just go into three-month chunks here. So February 28th will be the last day of meteorological winter, and we'll look at some of that data here probably tomorrow or the next couple of days. Now, if we take a look at what is to come, we got a cutoff low into California. We've got some fairly warm weather here across the Pacific Northwest for a couple of days. But then we have another system rolling in here, and this one is going to get Oregon a little bit more than it will Washington. It'll bring some mountain snow, some precipitation. We'll try to move up towards Washington, but again, mainly Oregon and California with that storm and kind of a transient ridge here. Another trough tries to approach as we go on in through next week, and uh, I'll, t I'll show you what's coming up here in the maps in a moment. I'll show you what the precipitation may look like a very weak system kind of sliding by as we go through the day today that cutoff low down to california and then the more substantial system rolls in here as we go through the weekend and again you can see kicking off some snow across you know maybe some of the klamath cascades oregon trying to bring some of that precipitation up into washington trying to target a bit of eastern oregon idaho as well looks like rain for the valley snow for the rocky mountains there kind of typical stuff not a very strong storm there and then we have another system trying to move in as we go through next week. Not exceptionally strong right now, but we'll continue to watch it and see what is to come after. So here's the National Blend of Models daily max two meter temperature for today. Look at this lower 60s for Seattle, maybe some mid 60s for Portland. We're not gonna hit record highs or anything like that uh, for today. I think the record high was 70 on February 27th for Seattle. We'll take a look at that here in a moment. But you see Southwest Oregon warming up quite nicely. Some of that warmth out there across the Columbia Basin as well. And this is the two meter temperature anomaly. So as we go through the day today, you can kind of see that we do warm up. We are above normal for this time of year, but it's you know a, a fairly quick shot of some warmth here. As we go on in through Friday, you see again, there is some areas, especially the Cascades of Oregon, that are gonna be above average, but we, we relax some of those temperatures here, and then we go on into Saturday. Again, fairly warm for the higher terrain, but watch as we go on into the weekend, you can kind of see the cooling start to come in here for places of Oregon, and it starts to cool things down across Washington as well. So 
Um, taking a look here, this is um, taking a look at Seattle, record high, it's February 27th, so 70 back in 1968. Portland, actually, surprisingly, Seattle beat Portland there, uh, 1968, 68 degrees. You can see the other uh, warm days that have occurred on February 27th, so we are not going to be breaking these uh, records or anything. And the highest February temperature for Seattle is 70, and Portland is 71 back in 1988, February 28th, so interesting stuff there. Now, taking a look at the extended forecast a little bit here. So there we go at the cutoff load. There's our more substantial system this weekend. Transient ridge rolls through. Then we get another trough trying to roll through next week. We'll see which areas this storm is going to target more and how much the pre precipitation will be occurring across the Pacific Northwest. Another transient ridge, but then we get the Gulf of Alaska trough. Looks like it starts to get rolling again here. And this might be a more substantial system as we go on into about the March 8th, 9th, 10th time frame here. So we'll be watching that one there quite closely. And then as you can see, if we scroll off into the future, there's additional troughs moving through here. So you can imagine we are not done with the cooler, chillier, windier weather here across the region. No doubt more mountain snows will be coming. Will any lower elevation snowfall potential happen? Who knows? Well, I'll show you an extended fun forecast here in a moment. Actually, right now, here's Spokane. So this goes out 46 days. So as we go through about, you know, the March 8th, 9th, 10th time frame, it does show a cool system coming down across the Pacific Northwest here. And you can see the ensemble mean for Spokane, for example, you know, it climbs up there and it's showing another 10 inches of snowfall by the time we get off in towards mid-April and most of that falling by the time we get to the end of March. But the blue is the control run. So the European weeklies run 100 ensembles. So it's pretty intense there. And you can see the different amounts of snow in those ensembles. And there's a control run at the very bottom here. But this is, you know, just kind of take that with a grain of salt. Just kind of a fun look at the extent of forecast. And the main thing I'm trying to do here is just point out that we are not done with... You know, I know there's a lot of people that move to Washington every year and I have people ask me, oh yeah, is it spring now? Or are we done with the colder weather and the winds? Like, no, the answer is 100% uh, no, because we're gonna be dealing with some cooler weather and some active systems that roll through here as we go through the month of, month of March. And you can see this reflected in like the six hour minimum uh, temperatures here. You look at some of these overnight lows, you know, they're still on the chilly side of things here at times as we move through the month of March. So Seattle-Tacoma, this is another look at that 46-day forecast total uh, precipitation amounts. And you can see the control on the mean very close. So by the time you get towards the end of March, what it, it's scheduling another four or five inches of rainfall there. So yeah, we, we do have some ways to go before we start to really get back into the main spring warmth. Now, six to 10 day temperature outlook. You can kind of see that mixed bag for the Pacific Northwest, six to 10 day above normal for a lot of the West. Eight to 14 day, you can see they're starting to highlight that below normal here. And we'll see how that turns out. This goes March 6th through March 12th and the eight to 14 day. Look at that above average all the way up across the Pacific Northwest also. And just a reminder, this was put out a couple days ago, February 20th, actually more than that, about a week ago now. But this is the March forecast was for below normal temperatures and above normal precipitation. And this is the seasonal outlook issued at the same time, March, April, May, below normal here across a lot of the Pacific Northwest and the above average signal there, big below normal here across the Southwest USA. And this drought monitor was updated here today. Uh, and you can see Oregon looks like it completely drought free, not the case for Washington, Idaho, or Montana. And if I click in on Washington, in fact, you can do so. It does include some of the Seattle Metro there as well. So we do have some moderate drought out there. We've got a pretty good deficit precipitation wise across some of the higher terrain. So something to watch out for. We'll see how that goes on through the spring months. But anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Otherwise, click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.